How do you take one of Australia's toughest four-wheel drive tracks and make it even harder? Well, simple. Just try tackling it in the snow. This is incredible. <laughs> oh my goodness. Freezing! And your bog holes have an inch of ice on them. I reckon this is the toughest we have ever done it. Wow! Well, well, I just unleashed every single kilowatt this thing's got. That is cooked. Just doesn't give up this track. This right here is the sleepy little town of Waratah, hidden away in a remote corner of the island of Tasmania. For those of us who like tough wheeling, Waratah represents the gateway to one of the wildest tracks in Australia. And that, of course, is why we find ourselves here in the middle of an unexpected snow dump as we get the rigs ready for a track that's just gotten a whole lot harder. Well, Tassie, September. Oh, no. <laughs> Didn't how, expect this. How crazy. A smart person will be in front of the fire today yep. and uh, they'll probably just curl up right in that pub there. That sounds right like a really sane thing to do. Not us. No, no we, we might go and tackle one of the toppest tracks in Australia without a doubt. Thousand dollar track. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> the locals think we're absolutely mad. Well, and yeah. They're probably right. <laughs> well, I reckon, mate, we get the keys, see if these things start and um, let's, let's go, go and do the toughest track in Australia. Why not? <laughs> sounds okay. like a good idea. <laughs> When it comes to Tasmania's weather, you've got to be prepared for anything. But tackling the relentless mud that makes up the thousand buck track after a snowstorm is going to be pretty next level. And I reckon we might just be in for a once in a lifetime adventure. The sun is shining again as we head out of Waratah, but we know from experience that the $1,000 track rarely dries out as it's hidden in the deep undergrowth of the forest. Sure enough, as we enter the start of the track, conditions are looking pretty hectic. <laughs> Look at the snow! This is incredible! Absolutely incredible. I've done the $1,000 track in the heat, I've done it in the freezing cold, but I've never done it in the snow, mate. This is quite a thing. I don't reckon too many people have, mate. This is pretty wild. What a way to start a trip, though. We hopefully will get through the $1,000 track. Maybe all the bog holes are frozen over, so we're gonna have a real easy time. <laughs> it could be like a highway, mate. Something tells me it's not gonna be like a highway. The 1000 buck track might run for less than 20 kilometers, but those Ks are jammed packed, full of huge bog holes, sketchy mud climbs, and harsh, rocky tracks. It's not a track to take on lightly, and definitely not without a well-equipped convoy. Not to mention, of course, some mature travelling buddies. <laughs> While the track ahead is pretty damn muddy, it's also got a lot of rocks and routes to navigate. So I'm going for a medium tyre pressure of 22 PSI. Ruben's taking one of the better looking rigs you'll ever see to attempt the 1000 buck track. And once again, he's planning ahead with a custom mud protector for the radiator. Sean's obviously been inspired and tried to replicate it with a more budget option. Come on, mate, what even is that? With the convoy aired down, it's time to make tracks towards the first crossing of the track and enjoy what could be our final glimpse of open skies for a few days to come. Soon enough, we're up on the entry to the forest, and that river crossing is looking mighty deep and pretty damn chilly. Holy heck. Wow, mate. You normally get your tyres wet, like, over there. It's usually up to your axles. This is, I might even catch a trout with sooty. I don't know. <laughs> Look how deep it is. I expect you guys, though, if I do go down, just, just, just jump straight into the water. <laughs> you have to. No. If, if a four-wheel drive goes down, you'll have to be in there, no. unfortunately. Don't want to get stuck in here, I'll tell you that for free. Incredible. It's deep. My end of the car's moving. Oh, <laughs> loose. <laughs> wow. I mean, the main thing of it now, that's kicked me across nicely, that is. Oh, 
Holy moly. And just like that, we're into the depths of the forest. And the track is looking wetter than I've ever seen it before. How cool is this? Well, Graeme, it's uh, starting to close in a little bit, mate. That might be the last bit of sunlight we see for a while. That's my memory of it, mate. As soon as you get across that river, <laughs> you kind of go into the undergrowth. Yeah, we'll soon learn when we get in there of how many people actually drive this track. It's um, one of those ones that, you know, it's on a lot of people's bucket list, but they don't like to drive it for obvious reasons. It's pretty hardcore. Have a look at this. I just wouldn't have thought there'd be snow underneath the tree cover. It must have absolutely dumped snow over the last 24 hours out here. What an experience, eh? What an experience. You can barely go five metres on this track without hitting a sketchy looking bog hole. And this one is no exception. The camera boys are leading the charge and they've soon found where the deep bit is. First bog hole, camera car's gone down. Um, I don't remember us getting stuck this early in the track before. So, yeah. we're gonna have a work cut out. Got the waders on now, mate, so I can uh, help out a bit better. So, the secret of tyre. <laughs> Looks like Ruben has just signed himself up as chief of recoveries for the trip. Shauno's going to be trying a different line to the camera car, but sensibly is prepping the winch just in case. Wowzers! 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 <laughs> I can't believe that, just drove that. Ever seen a small man run so fast? <laughs> Holy, I thought he was coming for me. That was impressive. <laughs> Holy moly, that was unreal. I just unleashed every single kilowatt this thing's got. <laughs> he always surprises me, this old girl. What a jigger, hey? Man, oh man. Well, Graeme's seen what sort of just did then. The good news is I went through there, I didn't hit any big rocks or boulders, so you can actually have a bit of a spirited drive. I'm gonna get out of the way, I think, when he comes, because I reckon the mud the away will be about this high, we'll be able to surf it from here. All right, mate, we're uh, ready for you, come on through. All right, let's just go in gently. See if I can hug that left hand bank a bit. Yeah. He's got it. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Yes! Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a drive. <laughs> he did not back off and you can just see track control or something working in there just up the bank. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's quite a hard exit as well. Ruben's picked the perfect line here and made it look pretty darn easy. Well done, mate. Nice one, mate. Good drive. That's one bog hole down. Yeah. There's 984 to go. <laughs> that is a bog hole. This track doesn't see a lot of vehicles at the best of times, and after the winter season, trees across the track are a real possibility. Sure enough, up ahead is our first obstacle. A chainsaw is a must in this part of the world, and clearing this one shouldn't be too much of an issue. Or so we thought. Fortunately, the old chainsaw's playing up a bit. And that is not a good sign. Bring her over, mate. There's a couple of men over here who can help you full start that if you like. Don't pull the... <laughs> Might over... <laughs> I'm gonna pull the string off it. Now, this little unit has already cleared the Umbulgari track and rattled its way through tough trips in Cape York and Queensland. 
But today, of all days, it's decided to give up the ghost. We're checking all the obvious problems, but this one is turning into a bit of a head-scratcher. Well, I suppose we'll just try the needle on seat. We've tried every trick we can think of, but it's a no-go. Doing this track without a chainsaw in these conditions is going to make the going a whole lot tougher. But there's always a plan B to keep things moving, and right now, that means a bit of good old-fashioned lumberjacking. It might not be the perfect solution, but it's got the job done, and we are on the move again. Just a few minutes down the track, the next challenge is waiting for us. And yes, folks, that is ice in a bog hole. Not something you see every day in Australia. Time to send in Captain Waiters. <laughs> Look at him. Well done. Uh, it's going to be nasty whichever way you go. Just, just made that. Stick a little bit more to the left, mate. I sort of went a bit into the middle and I nearly struggled. Well, as you can see, Sean went a bit over to the right and it nearly swamped him. It nearly got the better of him. So, very, very lucky. He loves sooting her up and he give her the berries. Going over into manual mode, engaging second gear lower range. And once I get my nose in, we're going to give it a red hot go. I'd like to pick up some croissants on my way to the cafe, if I could, please. Can you wet my boots? Good. Oh. A horrible noise coming from my brake caliper at the moment, but that's part of mud bogging, boys. Part of mud bogging. Good luck, Ruben. Right, eh? Ultimate 9, 79, BMW. It's all going to have the berry. Oh, shivers. He's coming in hot. I'm really hot. Yeah, the girls. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Ah! You got me again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> I think I pushed most of the water out. <laughs> he came in like a wrecking ball. Woo! <laughs> Next bog hole, boys. I have it covered. Oh. Um, Davy Crockett of the Tasmanian Wilderness. <laughs> he He's likes, here for the rescue. He's a mountain man and he loves mountain women. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you think that's muddy, let me tell you, this track has barely even started. And according to the VMS, we're only a couple of clicks into the track, with the challenges only getting bigger as we go. Speaking of which, this big old bog hole has caused us all sorts of grief, even in drier months. And right now, it's looking like a total Forby swallower. So we're going to investigate a different line this time around. She's not an easy option though, and the camera car has to winch its way out of strife on the slippery exit. Shono, it's all on you, mate. Bye, mate. Come on, mate. Come on. He's being quite conservative. He won't be here though. Yeah! Up, up. Up, up. Years are going to be a bit of hit and hope, I think. There we go. Oh, soot makes it through. I'm so glad we've got this option. Because last time we didn't have the option, we had to go around to the left. 
I think we're here for about two hours, two to three hours. Momentum, momentum. Oh. That's it, little wheel slip. Drive it, drive it, drive it. Nah. Uh, and a little bit of left when you come up. A bit left, mate. Uh, you're stuck, mate, on your side steps here. Yeah, we might winch it. There's not really a lot of choices on this line, and even with 33s, I'm just hanging up on my undercarriage. I'm pretty much having to skull drag the D-Max over that rocky hump in the middle of the track. But the rumba soon has me out with no dramas, and I can try the next section under my own steam. Drive it! Drive it! Drive it! That's it, drive it! So close. Do you remember that time I haven't had to winch up to here? Amazing, oh, eh? Something to throw at you. I, I don't know if it's a Tassie record or an Australian record or could this be the things going on? I don't know. I listen don't this, know. Listen to this vlog. If you've got a mate like Sean O, put it in the comments down below. There you go, guys. <laughs> You'd be very lucky if you did. You spell it F L O G. <laughs> Just let us know in the comments down below. We've all got that one, mate. We've all got that one, mate. Would you like a piece of chicken? Oh, yeah. Cracked black pepper. Oh, one. yes, please. So good. Here we go, Reuben. 79 to come through. I'm looking forward to this. All the wah. No, no, no. We'll just, we'll just draw it nicely. Spring hangers. Front locker would be good, boys. I forgot it. Yeah! Hey, get up! The big 79 is on song through this, but it's hung up at exactly the same spot Graham did. Just give us a winch, boys. So we made a deal, the boys don't know about this one yet, but we made a deal for every time you winch, you gotta give the person who didn't have to winch beer. So at the moment, I'm up to, I'm gonna have to start towing a trailer on these trips. What do we go through this way? There comes a point where no amount of power is gonna get you through, and Ruben's made the right call to winch out. But the 79 proves to be a whole lot more bellied out than we expected. Well, that's just made things really interesting. The spring hanger's caught here on this big rope. We're going for a temporary fix here, which is to remove the snap section of the rope and tie the remaining length to a hook with a bowline. We're also chucking a rock under the tyre where the hanger is caught up and finally changing the winch angle. We're thinking we're going to reposition this anchor point because we're kind of pulling across the grain here. If we go a bit straighter, might be to get a better pull on him. And there you have it, it worked like a charm. There he goes. Yeah! On to the final section, and this is going to require some spirited driving. Woo! Yes! Yeah, happens to the best of us. Holy heck, he really wants it, doesn't he? Listen to that big 79, I'll tell you what, they do sound good. All right, spirit of drive, you'll have this. Yes! Yes! He's stoked, he should be as well, that's yeah. a mad drive. Time passes pretty quickly on the thousand buck track and already the sun is starting to sink somewhere up above the tree cover. As we creep the Forbies along through the dense undergrowth, we're soon up on a roadblock that could be a showstopper. 
This old tree has fallen right across the path of the track. It has to be nearly a foot in diameter. And what we don't have right now is a working chainsaw. Looks like a bit of a game changer. I reckon we can axe it though. I mean, it's a, big, it's a big job, but I reckon we could do it. We could. Yeah. It would be a massive job. This is the day that boys became men. What an hour of light, might as well use it. There's no way we want to give up on a track like this so easy. So once again, it's out with the axe. But this is going to take a whole lot of effort. We've soon got a good system going, with everyone sharing the load and chipping away at the tree trunk. Even the camera crew puts down their gear to lend a hand. Well, we're taking a turns, bit of a round robin. We've got the camera boys involved. And all of us are just sort of having a couple of minutes on it to go. I reckon we're just about halfway through. We get another couple of inches. We'll throw a winch on it and see if we can snap it. Try and pull it out of the way. And then um, hopefully there's a bit of a camp down here. We're hoping, we're hoping, fingers crossed. We've used it before, so hopefully it's still down there. But Bit of a workout. Sean, sure, he's, uh, he's lucky he's been going to the Mudgery Bar Zoo. Hey, look at him. <laughs> Our aim is just to cut the log to a point where it can be broken with a winch. And after a couple of hours of axing, we've got it to the point where we should be able to snap it. Just as we would with a super stuck vehicle, we're using two runvers here. The first connected to the log and the second anchoring the camera car to Sooty to give us much more leverage. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, keep it going. Bending. And <laughs> would you look at that? We might just be winning. We got her. If you ever needed a reminder of just how incredible winches can be, have a look at that. Unbelievable. The track is open again, but with the sun long gone, I reckon it's about time to find a spot to pull up for an iron jack and a feed. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a monumental effort to do that with an axe. I think if there's a new four-wheel drive 24-7 rule when we come to Tasmania, you take three chainsaws. Because if your backup chainsaw has problems, you've got another backup one. We're never coming here again with only one dodgy chainsaw, that's for sure. Gotta say boys, that was epic. To get through a log like that with a with an axe. The Lumberjack of the Year award definitely, definitely goes to you boys. I'll tell you what, I've never seen so many biceps flex and so many wood chips fly. Is it time for a beer, mate, and to set up camp or what? Yep, as soon as I find a spot that's dry for at least three and a half metres, we're in. Sounds like a plan, awesome stuff. The $1,000 track is not exactly a camper's paradise, and a good spot means nothing more than a few metres of flat ground out of the mud. And this right here looks like it might be the ticket. All right, the bar's officially now open. <sighs> I reckon that'll do us, mate. That'll do. Shimmy in here. Oh. Into Casa Cahill. Look at that. So, so just pretend. Yeah. So I'll be sleeping like this. <laughs> You'll be there. I'll be going to say, hey. You wait. Do you like red smarties or blue? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> what a day. What do you think of your first day on the thousand dollar track, mate? Oh, uh, cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs> cheers, Wood. Oh. Uh. Look, all I can say is that your chopping needs to improve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you that. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that, actually. There's just three things you need to make any campsite perfect. That's a fire, a beer, and a good feed. And we've soon got all of those boxes ticked. It's been a cracker of a first day on the track, but I reckon the best is yet to come.
Well, guys, hope you're loving the $1,000 track. I mean, it's got to be one of the toughest tracks in Australia, especially when you get that much rain and snow. The mud is absolutely insane. But I wanted to just pause right for a second and let you know about this really cool competition. You see, our mates over at Bison are giving back to four-wheel drivers. The end of 2021 is coming up very, very soon. Now, to celebrate, Bison are giving 10 of these Bison packs. We include a new set of boots, a couple of T-shirts, a hat. Um, there'll be 10 of those to win, plus there'll be two major packs which will have the exact same kit plus a $1,500 gift voucher from Drifter. So, a couple of really cool prizes. Now, to win, we've got a link below. So hit that link and let us know in 50 words or less what adventure you'd love to go on yourself with a new pair of Bison boots. You'd be pretty bloody stoked to win a pair of these. Now, you see us using these Bison boots down in Tasmania, and I've used mine right around the country. And if they can handle the $1,000 track, they'll handle anything you throw at them. Anyway, let's get back into the Tasmanian adventure. In the light of the morning, we can see our camp spot properly for the first time. And let's just say it's lucky we're all friendly, because we're squeezed in like a tin of sardines. The fold-out kitchen on the DMW rig is perfect for a spot like this, taking up virtually zero room, but giving Reuben a pantry and a cooker to work out of. And you gotta say, life is looking almost luxurious at this end of camp. And just to up at a notch, he's even got the microwave cranking with something hot for breakfast. You know the best thing about this? I've got no washing up. <laughs> as good as it gets on the side of the track. The snow might be thinning out, but the temps this morning are absolutely freezing. And the best thing to do is just to keep moving and try and make an early start. Right in front of the camera car is our first problem of the day, another fallen tree that's landed right up the length of the track. Given what we've seen already on the track so far, I think there's only one sensible thing to do, and that's try and repair the chainsaw. We already had a few cracks at this trackside yesterday, but with clearer heads, we reckon we might just have found the problem. This is what, the third time we pulled this, it is this blooming time, thing apart? But this time we've um, used compressed air to clean it out. Just on the side of the track was a bit hard now. At camp, it's a bit easier. I got my fingers crossed, I reckon this is, this is our best shot at it, so it's gonna work. Oh yes, that is a good sound. She might be running a bit rough and need the choke to be held on, but I reckon it's gonna do the job. Sure enough, we've got the track reopened and we're ready for another big day. Now, the thousand buck track gets its nickname from the fact that you can never get down it with less than a thousand bucks worth of damage. And Sean seems to be living up to that already. <laughs> I thought the chainsaw was running poor. Holy heck. <laughs> All right, day two. Oh, I cannot tell you how cold it is. Oh my goodness, freezing! So far, we've made it just six Ks into the track and with some huge bog holes to navigate up ahead, we'll be happy if we can make it another six Ks today. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is one heck of an adventure. Tell you what, there's four key points to remember when it comes to tackling bog holes, like these ones right here in Tassie. Tire choice, tire pressure, momentum, and of course, let's not forget, preparation. Now, the pressure I'm running at the moment is about 22 PSI. I didn't want to go too low. Of course, you don't want to leave them high because you need that grip out here when you're coming over these rocky, muddy stones and rocks that are all through this track. Tire choice goes without saying, you need a quality set of mud terrain tyres. I'm using the Bridgestone Jewelers out here because they've got a really aggressive tread and it clears the mud really quickly, which allows me to get a heap more traction. Then, sometimes it just comes down to momentum. You've got to pick your line, commit to it, and go in with just the right amount of momentum so that you can keep your speed up and get on through that bog hole without getting stuck in the middle. And when it comes to preparation, well, it's as simple as making sure 
your recovery gear is ready to go and easy to get to. With tips like those and some good mates, there's very little you can't have a crack at, even a track like this one, which up ahead is just getting denser. Every metre on the 1,000 buck track is a fight for traction and clearance, and those tight sections can actually become some of the hardest sections to conquer. But slowly and steadily, we're making it through. Good angle. Yep. 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 Oh. There it goes. There you go. Oh. Oh. Got the drive. Bit of drive, bit of drive. Yep. For the last hour or two, we've been slowly descending into a valley. And what's down the bottom is a couple of absolutely insane looking bog holes. From what we've heard from the locals at Waratah, no one's attempted these in a number of months, so we're taking zero chances. All the gear is coming out, and we're getting set up for a possibility of a really difficult winch. Hello, I'm holding the winch rope here. I've got it all ready for a double line pull, and I've got to keep this kind of tight or else the weight of the hook is going to go down in the mud. I'll drive over it and then it'll be a real mess. Mud has almost immediately grasped onto the undercarriage of Sooty, and the big rig is going nowhere. Have we got a bit of water in here yet? With the winch already set up for a double line pull, we're minimising the amount of time Sean is going to spend getting his feet wet, with the winch ring massively reducing the load on the run bar. Even with all that, this is still a massive winch. These bogs are next level. So front pops, we're laughing. Sooty is trying to climb a near vertical wall of mud here, and that bog isn't keen to let him go. But at last, we've broken the suction. Sean might be out, but he's not out of strife yet. Well, mate, it's just giving up the ghost. I get no, I've got no charge coming through. Very low charge at least. It's not good, but that's that Tassie mud for you. It just kills starter motors, alternators and bearings. Actually just kills everything, to be honest with you. <laughs> just thought, while I was at it, may as well give the old alternator a bit of a spray in this. This is the old turbo spray. It's a water dispersant, so all that mud and crap in the alternator, give it a spray and hopefully it sort of gets some of that water out and cleans it up a little bit, and maybe I'll get my charge back. Well, Sean's not exactly made that one look easy, but I'm set up just the same for a double line pull. And hopefully Sooty has scooped out a bit of the mud for me. Let's see how we go. Yeah. Right. When you're stuck in deep muddy water like this, you really don't want to hang around. And we're racing to get the winch gear hooked up before Graham's feet become a paddle pull. And pretty quickly, we've got him on the move. It's just a vertical wall, eh? Hey? After a huge effort on the runver, Graham has dragged himself and the D-Max out of trouble. And we've got just one more vehicle to get through. Hey, you what? Thirsty work.
<laughs> Man, this bog is taking no prisoners. And once again, we've got a big winch ahead. Winter in. It's a tight fit for the 79 in this deep old bog hole, and Ruben's hard up against the bar work on all sides. You can do it. You can do it. Yes! Yeah, less drive, Ruben. Uh, Maybe less drive, I think. Oh, we'll almost oh, reset him there. Yeah, we'll just reset you. After another hard recovery, the DMW rig is out of the water, oh, but man. still can't find any traction. Just a quick tip, guys. When you're putting your recovery blanket in a situation like this, don't put your recovery blanket over the top of all this gear here because, well, two reasons. One, it might get in the way of what's going on, but secondly, you can't see what's happening. So you can't see. keep an eye on this here to make sure it hasn't crooked itself or the rope slipped off or anything like that. So just put it back behind here. Everything will still sort of fall on the ground when it, when it breaks, but yeah, make sure it's not in the way. Right. It might look all pretty simple on camera, but getting through obstacles like this is a massive effort. And already the day is starting to slip away from us, and the old repair bill is starting to rack up. That's it. Well. <laughs> Maybe getting in and out of that door then. <laughs> we might have to uh, run the winch under the car, give her a bit of a suck down mm -hmm. so we can use it all, but I'm not too worried about the side step. Looks like it's done its job like it's supposed to. Right around the bend is the next bog hole, and it's looking equally as challenging as the last one. This bog is seriously deep, and we don't want to be fishing for the recovery gear underwater. So Graham's running ahead with the winch rope just in case. Oh man, this is insane. So is practically a submarine here. So close. Just when we thought Sean was stuck, <laughs> it looks like he's gotten his second win. On you, mate. Close, but no cigar. And the bog has claimed another victory. Just as Graham's lining the D-Max up for the challenge, something seems to let go under the hood. That does not sound good. Sounds like a broken belt, doesn't it? Yep. It's hitting the fan at least. Hmm. Right, well, this is a bit of a game changer. This is my, well, part of my serpentine belt, which uh, second time in two trips that I've done this, and only the third time ever that I've done a belt. Just really it, unlucky, I think. It is unlucky, but the bad news is this is for my alternator, no biggie, just swap batteries around, keep driving, but it also runs my water pump. Look, the good news is it's not exactly hot around No, here. I reckon I could probably keep driving almost. The thing is you just you just can't let it idle. No. You just have to turn it off all the time yeah. and just drive short stints, and I think it'll be fine. Just keep an eye on that temperature. And swap and batteries as we need to. If we need to, I can, I can tell you, at least you've got your steering. I've got steering yeah. and Stereo still works. A good attitude. I've got a great attitude. <laughs> With all those things that combine, you'll, yep. be, you'll be fine. It's just a little bit of a speed up, that's all. Ideally, when you're not getting charged to your alternator, you want to be limiting the amount of heavy winching you have to do, as that, of course, can drain a battery pretty fast. But that's not really an option on this track at the best of times, so we're just going to have to manage the situation as best as we can. Something in there, <laughs> really evil. I don't know what it is. All credit to Graham here. He's gotten the D-Max through without any further issues. Ruben's the last one through this challenge and literally has to winch himself into the bog hole to make it through. This track, I tell you, she's pretty loose. Finally, after a lot of hours on the recovery, we're all through. It's hard to fathom how an entire day can slip away in the space of a few kilometres. But by the time the whole crew is through, the day is coming to a close. And with a bunch of breakages to look at and the temps plummeting, 
we reckon it might be time to just call it a day. Well, it doesn't take long to lose light. Well, I reckon if you get a bit of flat ground that you don't have to swim around it through, um, <laughs> I'm keen to make it a bit of a camp. Likewise, mate, I've got a bit of dry firewood there, a couple of cold beers. Whatever you find, pull over, we'll make it happen. I've got to say, as gnarly as that was, it was a lot of fun though. It just gets harder every time we try. It just becomes such a challenge, this track. Oh, clean as a whistle. Some flattish ground soon presents itself, and I can tell you, we need very little excuse at this point to park up and slide the fridges out. A little bit of bad news today about the alternator, but look, you've got to pay to play, in my opinion, when you come to tracks like this, you've got to expect alternator starter motors, things like that to go. Um, good news is, however, I have 98% according to um, the revision screen here. So for my auxiliary battery, I'm nearly 100%. So that's really cool. Fridge is going to go. Um, not that we need a fridge tonight, it's that cold. Um, camp lights, all that other stuff. And because I've got 100 amp hour Red Arc lithium battery, that means that even if I don't get this alternator going for you know, a couple of days, I'm going to have plenty of auxiliary power because there's plenty with 100 amp hours of lithium. So. You know, I was going to start ripping that old thing out tonight, but it's just about to get dark. I might just have a beer with the boys, I think, and make a bit of a fire. I think it's a better idea. We'll deal with that tomorrow. All right, that's cool. Nothing like a nice cold beer after a day like we've had today. Holy moly. Took the liberty this morning. Whilst we were mucking around, just to jump on the axe for 10 minutes and I just cut up a bunch of wood. I kept it up on the roof today, a bit of airflow through it. You can see I've just cut it up, all kindling. Just so that I knew we'd get in, I knew we'd get in tonight and be camping on the track. And there's no way you get any of this going anytime soon, but this should roar into life. And that is why I love these fire pits, because it gets it up off that wet, moist ground. And you think to yourself, but it's only so small, but it's not. You get this thing cranking tonight, I've had these things red hot. And uh, we'll all sit around this night and it'll be toasty warm. I think Sean might even cook dinner on it, I'm not sure. I'll leave that to him, he's the chef. What a day. <laughs> well, boys, day two, $1,000 track. I oh, know. Living up to his name. Yeah, exactly right, mate. They didn't call it the easy and you'll make it in a day track, <laughs> did they? <laughs> it's, it's $1,000 a, track. It's, I, I, think it's, I think it's crap, though, because it's gone up in inflation. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's about three and a half grand, I reckon, sort of track to that. I've done more than that. <laughs> I've done more than that. <laughs> You're five? Do you add it up in your convoy? I reckon, I reckon so it's become more valuable today. It has not. <laughs> it's all, you know, you've got to put an alternator in it. You look at yeah, it because okay. you blowing more smoke. This is all true. Goodness this gracious. This is all true. Look, but... It's one of those things though, I mean, we signed up for one of the toughest tracks in the country, yep. and that's what we got. And, and you were saying the other day, this is a track I think everyone, you know, what, no matter what you do, what you, you might be a crawly boy like yeah, Jock. you love rock crawling yep. or something. This is something you've got to put on your resume. Now, speaking of stuff to write home about, get your pens ready folks, because I've got a cracker of feed for the boys tonight. Well, here we are, thousand dollar track on the side of the track. Literally, well, I think we're about halfway through, and I don't even know. I haven't even looked at the map, but things are going. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, mate. I've got no but idea, for man. now, thousand dollar track. I think we just get a good feed going. Yeah. So, what do you got planned? Right, I just think something nice and warm, simple. Yep. Chicken boschiola. That doesn't sound simple. Yeah, no, it is. It is. All it right. is. It is. It's super simple because I'm making it. And obviously, it well, can't be if too... you can make it, it's got to be pretty simple. <laughs> Jump in there, grab some chicken out. Chicken. I'll get this on the boil. Copy that. Excuse me, Jeff. What's happened? Yeah, What's happened? Is that cold? That you got to shake this. I have got bacon. I've got. Do you need these little boys? <laughs> Do you think it's cold? Whoa! <laughs> it is working. <laughs> Whoa! What are you doing? I don't know, but this is really cold, and the, the problem is when you get. Nah, that's not how yeah, it should be. That doesn't sound right. Just sit it on top. <laughs> I don't know. The flames are getting bigger when you do it. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> a little bit of oil in there. Little, should be, should be some um, yeah, chicken yeah, yeah. tenders. If you go down the bottom there somewhere. Yeah, I've got it. There we go. Chicken tenders. What's the date on those? Twenty eighth. Oh, we're good. We're good. Today's the day. We're good. We're good. Look at that. These are these are <laughs> little tenderloins, and that's what you want. That's <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> Chuck them in. While I'm doing that. You might um, mm -hmm. chop, we need to chop some onion, we need to chop some 
the chili, this one, the bacon, all Oh, well, how about you give me a job then? Yeah. Because I'm basically just layering the base. How's that looking? Oh. Is it working this or is, is it actually, too cold? I'm going to get a sore wrist doing this, but. No, you're not. You've got so much practice. See, look at that, look at that. The second you do that, yep. Yep, the flames are on again. I can't do that all night. Give that a good salt. Yeah, now we're on. <laughs> Things you have to do when you can't on the side of a track and it's this cold and tazzy. I mean, it makes you feel weird. Maybe if I don't look at it. <laughs> well, I reckon you'd be better at this than I am, mate. I don't ah, know. Well, do you want me to stand beside it and give it a... There you go. While that's going on, I'm just going to chuck, chuck all your onions in. I would say it in turns, if you like. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Yeah, we're cooking with gas now. Yeah, so long as I keep shaking it. All right, a bit of chilli. We're just going a little bit tonight. Get her in there. Yeah, keep working that, mate. I know, I am. Because once, once, once you work that properly, <laughs> will you ready for the next stage, which is these spicy chorizo. It's a very labour-intensive cooking. I've never done it left-handed. <laughs> We call that the stranger. <laughs> there you go. There you go. In. Beautiful. Beautiful. Give that a little toss. If you could do some bacon. <laughs> I'd be like a maraca. Just give it a big old. I can't believe it. Do you think we a block jet? Have you tried the other side? That's a smart man would do. Whoa! Holy! Why did you do that? Well, <laughs> Why do you do this all the time? <laughs> the GoPro there. It's warm. Yeah. That's gonna be a well, good you shot. You try that, no. Yeah, try it again, but with less gas. That's the way. Right, mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. It's gonna really make sure that chicken's cooked, eh? Well, oh, mate, we're cool with gas here. We've got the steam is going crazy. I mean, oh. <laughs> I don't have to shake the gas canister anymore. No. We found the right cooker. Yeah. Um, I reckon we get rooming in because we might get some pasta Where on the wall. What a wild day, boys. It's not what, the best campsite we've ever had, but. Wild day, all right, mate. Wild day. I think well, Chef Whale needs got, some help here, mate. I've got this coming along, it's going to be absolutely unreal. If I could give you a job, because your kitchen is um, probably better than mine, mate. I've got some, just some fettuccine. So I just boil some water up for those ones. Uh, while I'm in here, I'll grab some cream out. Yep. Well, next step is. Um, I'm basically going to add the cream in because... Ooh, this is my favourite bit. I know. And what I want to do, as soon as I put the cream in, I'm going to reduce it down now. Obviously, those guys looking at the show thinking, that's not how you cook a Bosciola. Well, when you're on the side of a track, exactly. in the middle of Tasmania, you're going to do you it right as, now? as easy as possible. <laughs> Normally, you'd move the chicken out yeah, and do you all would, that sort would, of stuff. Would. But you know what? Tonight, we're just going to pour that cream straight in like that. I can't even get into my swag without a branch being in the swag <laughs> as I get in. So, if you've got a problem with the Bosciola... So now I'm going to reduce that down a fraction. So you want it to get a little bit thicker than that. So I'm just going to put that down a fraction. A little bit more. And I've actually got one more thing. You, yeah. you ain't even picked this because really? we're in the middle of Tasmania. Oh, there's, damn, boy. <laughs> there's a little stash of uh It's the devil's parsley. lettuce. Parsley. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to just shake that right across it. Good on you. Damn, and then that was good. It actually does. And when the pasta goes in there, so, yeah, mate. <laughs> What's the matter? I've got something. <laughs> ah, jeez. Ah, you, you uh, I don't know what you've done here. Oh, but I'm you... stuck into the cream. Oh, is that what happened? Is that what happened? No, you can get like that. I'll just. <laughs> Sorry, I'll... folks. I... There's all that shaking of the gas canister, and you've got. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> as soon as you hear the boiling, back her off. Oh, that looks superb. Yep. That's Damn, boy. Got to reduce it. Get thicker. That's I'm glad what... we didn't put any more mushrooms in there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> mm, on. Got a bit of a stir. I reckon that's looking quite good now. It's nice that and thick. That smells. It's nice I and thick. I wish we had smell vision It's nice yeah. and thick. Just whack it straight in. Whack oh, it straight in. That. Oh, oh you get in there. That. That's all okay, right. Okay, that way. Get in there. Whack her in. That's a lot of pasta. That's a <laughs> heck of a lot of pasta. That is good, man. So we might have lunches on our hands, guys. Grab yourself a bowl. Get yourself a bowl. Not that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that is looking good. I'm going to turn the heat off that. 
We are ready to serve up, as okay. they say in the big kitchens. Excellent. Plate up, I think they say. <sighs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Look at that. I'll take that off your hands. That's a full bowl. Yeah. Holy heck, that's Give hot. It. Thank you. Give me yours. That's Italian restaurant quality. And I think that, you know what the uh, extra the is. genius is? There's so much the little, the little, The little uh, salamis in there. Yeah, little trees, though. Salamis, yum, yum, yum. Look at that. There we go. Now we're done. A little bit of parmesan. Mm. I reckon that will just add that little little lift we're all looking for. Oh, yeah. that is superb. Honestly, you've outdone yourself. There's only one thing better. I suggest you suck your gut in and let's get let's get to the campfire. I know. You're going to have to get through all those trees. I know. It sucks, <laughs> but it's right, camp. me. Day three on the Thousand Buck Track. We're just over halfway along the track, but already the battle scars are starting to show. With a few repairs to get sorted and a couple of massive challenges not far ahead, we're making an early start on another cold morning, getting a quick coffee in before we pack up camp. First task of the day, of course, is to check out the alternator on Sean's truck, which, surprise, surprise, hasn't fixed itself in the night. Token that, you know, new day, maybe the alternator will just magically repair itself overnight, but as you can see, dashes it up like a Christmas tree. That flashing of all your lights indicates that alternator is cooked, you're getting no charge, I can confirm that. Obviously with the, the red vision as well, I can have a look at that, there's no charge going into the system. Plus, put a multimeter across on the battery, plus the back of the alternator, there's no charge. It's just reading just under 12.1, it's pretty low. And because Graham as well doesn't have his alternator working because the belt's gone, I think I might just replace that alternator now so I can keep my batteries topped up. That way I can give him fresh batteries and trade his battery if it goes flat. So the untrained eye is collecting firewood. <laughs> Those that know him well enough, no, that, that is not for firewood. <laughs> That's so much better. Changing alternators is just part of the parcel of mud wheeling, and we've certainly changed a few on Sooty in the past. It's a reasonably cheap spare to keep in the Forby and an absolute lifesaver on tracks like this. That is cooked. It's only got like half of Tassie's mud in it. Look at that. that. That's just thick Tassie mud. And the thing with Tassie mud is so different from other mud that I've seen around the country. It's just so silty. So you see the mud has actually got like lots of like earth matter in there. So that gets absolutely everywhere. through your radiators, through alternators, data motors, you name it. We can get that plug out. Lucky, we bring spares with us. It doesn't matter how many times you do this, changing these things trackside on an 80, it's always a little bit fiddly. It's got this one bolt we can't get lined up. Have you got it? But with a bit of grunt and a few extra ugga duggers, we've got the new alternator in place and Sooty is back to being a weapon. Spicy. Look out! Yes! Look at that, she's purring like a kitten. Now I've been logging the trip on the VMS and in two days we've gone just shy of 12 Ks. And that leaves another eight or so to the track's end at the Coldstream River. If all goes to plan, we could be making it there by the end of the day. Still, a lot can happen in 8Ks on this track, so we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. Not far out of camp, we hit one of the biggest challenges of this track, a slippery rutted climb and a bog hole for which a line changes every season. This year, there's water absolutely everywhere, and even the entry section to the main climb is looking pretty darn tough. Well, this spot right here has some very vivid memories for me. This is where we first noticed when we last did the track that one of the vehicles had a broken steering arm. There was a wheel like that and a wheel like that, which is no good. Got in here at lunchtime, we got to the top of this hill and made camp at midnight. You do the maths. Hopefully today we can get through just a little bit quicker. Righto, mate. Too much horsepower. 
Little bit that way. Yep. Now straighten up. <laughs> you are fully going into the river. Like you would have just fallen into the river. <laughs> How's that new alternator? Oh, it must be sounding good. I actually had money that he was not going to make that through that, but uh, oh, it looks like I lost. <laughs> so far, I've been able to continue along the track just on the power from the starter battery. But with no charge coming in, I reckon I'll need to swap it out pretty soon, especially if I need much more time on the end of a winch rope. We've seen in the past that lower clearance vehicles get hung up in this section, so I'm leaving the option open for a snatch if needed. Sneak train. <laughs> I think I'm hung up, mate. I might need to winch over this a little bit. Just one more. come up really hard on something. I want to try and go back, I reckon, and realign. I just fully hit a wall. Yep, that's a wall, all right. Do you want to just chuck those max tracks over the top of that? Right. Clearance is everything in these situations, and look at that. Those max tracks do the job perfectly. Just like that. So we do it, high five, yeah! Money hands! <laughs> You're gonna check. <laughs> Those look like logs, it just sort of jumped up as soon as it jumped up. Yeah, that's good, felt mm. really smooth too. Yeah, new colour from Max Tracks called Tassie Bog Hole, inspired by the thousand dollar track. Okay, time for the big 79. Been a bit of a staple diet on this trip for snacks. Doing all this sort of stuff, you haven't got time to have a feed or anything like that, so a few bits of jerky, keep you going. It's good stuff too. There's something about this particular bog hole that seems tailor-made to catch 70 series spring hangers. And this is the second time in as many years that we've seen this happen in this exact spot. Ruben's soon out of trouble though, and with the entry section done, we can move on to the main challenge. The camera car is up first, and that heavy old GU isn't having a bar of it, and has to opt for a pretty hard winch. Time to send in Rocky Raccoon. Destroyed, Shuey. Look at the camera. You're gonna have to do something about that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> camera is fried. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Can we get the wind track? It looks like once again the thousand dollar track is coming out on top, and the run but is soon spooling out. This track is absolute torture on the vehicles, and now my lockers have given out. It's making this winch all the more difficult. It's taking a huge effort to get up this climb, and it's calling for a bunch of winch resets, changing the angle of the recovery, and of course, a fair bit of old right boot. Finally, Sooty's out of the bog hole, but I can point her up towards the top. Graham, all I can say is good luck, mate.
All right, Graham's up next. We've just made a bit of a ramp with a couple of logs because we're gonna put at least the amount of pressure on that winch of his, because of course he's got no charge at the moment. So we'll send him through and um, winch him up here. Hopefully it won't be too hard. All right, mate. Putting some logs in the ruts seemed like a good idea at the time, but I think it might have backfired in this case. Hang on, something's not right here. Hey? I think I'm stuck on something. I got can nothing. You, can you turn or not? Nothing, not a thing. And I think that's just about my battery too. Yeah, that's the battery. We might have to change that. Just doesn't give up, this track. There you go. Well, it's not the most ideal place to swap out a battery, but that's how it goes. And we're soon grabbing the spare auxiliary battery from Sooty to swap out with the D-Max crank battery. That's part one of the plan, and part two involves Ruben's rear winch. You see, even with a full battery, there's every chance Graham could completely drain it after just one hard winch, and that'll put us in the same predicament as before. So instead, we're trying to get the 79 around on another line so you can winch the D-Max through instead. Now, to be honest, getting around on the left is easier said than done and it takes a huge effort to get Reuben through. But we are getting the job done. Well, this is working absolutely spectacularly because we've been able to get Reuben around the D-Max. Now, on those tight tracks, you'd have no chance of doing that, but it's actually worked out well. It's got a different bog hole. Bloody beautiful. With the DMW rig in place, we can get onto the final stage, and that's hooking up the rear winch and getting the D-Max moving. With a new battery, I'm able to start the vehicle up again and provide a bit of drive, and get myself out of trouble once again. that folks we got through well before midnight <laughs> we're killing it Ruben you mad man <laughs> far out you're not scared to drive this thing are you no mate no I'm glad we threw that bog hole though <laughs> I was just about to pull the fridge out and go and eat myself up a sausage roll <laughs> <laughs> to be fair the 79 has copped an absolute hiding on this trip and to do two Tassie ones back to back and it's you know it's starting to show signs it's got a few dints it's got a few scratches the bar works all twisted but one thing that hasn't even looked like it's been compromised in any way is your tray and canopy and to think this is alloy and still in one piece is absolutely amazing yeah especially with all the hits it's had on the outside but look how clean that is i know not a, not a bit of water in here look you can actually see the mud <laughs> thick mud up into the seal and then it's then it's really clean inside so obviously you take pride on making sure these things seal, but the strength for an alloy canopy and tray is amazing. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, bracing, in, especially in these doors and across the roof and across the front and everything like that. We've had a good think about what to do with building the new XTR design. Yeah. And uh, look, doing these types of tracks, got to find out what they're really capable of. And look, we found out they're very, very tough. Mate, well, a lot of people think the only way to go if you want a tough canopy and tray is steel. Yeah. But obviously it weighs an absolute ton. You've proven that you can shave a stack of weight off, yet still have something as tough. And I mean, if this can stack up to what we've been doing. And I mean, the canopy's yeah. still nice and tight and, and you know, and sealed. Yeah. That's all I'm chasing. All right, well, three sausage rolls, not cool. just one. <laughs> <laughs> We've had all matter of gremlins and mechanical dramas on this trip, but there's really no better place to test out the capability of your vehicle and accessories, and all these rigs have been hanging on and keeping us moving. We've still got a fair bit of ground to cover, but at last it feels like we might have the measure of the thousand buck track. There's still plenty of challenges being thrown our way, but ever so surely, the river that marks the end of the track is getting closer.
as the daylight starts to fade, we start our final descent towards the Coldstream River. And after three days of hard wheeling and mud bogging fun, the thousand buck track is almost done and dusted. Well, boys, according to the GPS, the old VMS is telling me we should be just about right on it. And I'm glad for that because I can't see a thing out me, Wings Grant. <laughs> oh, boys. Boys, boys, boys. I couldn't think of a, a better bunch of blokes to do this with. The $1,000 track, it gets harder every time we try it. To do it just after winter, maybe one of the first four drives of this season to go through. Yep, that'll do, mate. I want an epic experience, fellas. Started off in the snow. And we're down here near the creek, ready to crack a cold one, hopefully. I just can't believe we got through. Well, we're not quite through yet, but, you know, we're, we're close enough, mate. I can see the, the creek down there. Oh, look at it. There it is. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. You beauty. I'll tell you what, it's been a bit of a struggle, but holy moly, what an experience. And thanks very much. I've enjoyed every single bit of it. With night on the way, I reckon it's time to find ourselves another camp for the night and leave the run back into civilization for the morning. There's just one last hill between us and a flat camping spot. And with the prospect of a cold beer by the fire in mind, we get stuck right in. thousand dollar track oh my goodness gracious yeah, me. we've done it again and you know every, every time we do it it just gets harder and harder the bar just keeps so. raising and we decided yeah. to do it just after one of the bigger just after winters winter, yeah and it snowed at the start of this trip can you even remember that i do and it was <laughs> it I, snowed we're in the snow what were we thinking driving bog holes with ice over the top over the of the bog holes you Incredible. waded through one and you cut a path <laughs> through the ice <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I want to put it to you folks at home. Maybe you've got a harder track in your local area, but I damn right doubt it because the $1,000 track, as it stands at the moment, yeah. in my opinion, I'm, is the hardest track in Australia. I'm going to rename it. It's the $4,500 track. It's the $8,500 <laughs> track. As tough as it was, it's bloody enjoyable. It's oh, totally. super rewarding to totally. get here. We've got all the cars. I know. It's loose. And it, look... To do it with a good bunch of blokes. Perfect. Yeah, you know, I don't get romantic around a fire right now, but I might. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of which, I'm gonna grab another beer because I'm just about yeah. out, guys. We've got a fire going. We've conquered the thousand dollar track. Yeah, big cheers here, eh? You. Yeah, good on you, boys. Guys, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us, and we will catch you next time on Four Wheel Drive Twenty Four Seven. Hopefully, not on the side <laughs> of the thousand dollar track. Cheers, guys. Coming up is a full drive, 24 seven outtakes. But first, let's check on some of the gear that makes trips like these possible. Well, say mate, this track, $1,000 track. Next and level. It never fails to disappoint. I mean, it's one of the toughest tracks you'll do anywhere I'm in right. Australia, I'm without right. a doubt. Yep. We're just, I'm just looking over Sooty at the moment. I'm just surprised it's all still in one piece, to be honest with you. True, 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 true. This is the part where we go over some of the gear that we use that got us to this point right here. In the last few days out there, I'm going to start with something that I haven't even thought about the whole trip. What's that? And that's the fact. My tyres. Hmm. The old Bridgestone jewelers. Haven't even thought about them. They've done the job. They haven't got a puncture. Haven't let me down. And what I do love about these tyres is the way they clear the mud so easily. So when I get on those hills, just give it a bit of, a bit of fury. Mm. Mud goes flicking everywhere, which you can see because the car's covered in it. And then I just, you can feel it get that little bit more grip as you're coming up the hill. Talking about mud clearing properties, mate. Yep. Something that this is not. <laughs> I'm talking about my Snatch clothing. Look, we use this stuff right <laughs> around Australia, some of the te testing conditions. I and mean, this is this has been very testy on the clothes, as you can tell. We've been absolutely filthy. This is actually my fresh. I, I, kept, I thought you I, put I it, kept yeah. One, I yeah, kept one ready. Dapper. So when we finish a track, I could get in the mud, mud. Yeah, from here. From up. here, no, from here to here, roughly. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. The rest. <laughs> but, but this is the stuff. I mean, it's super warm yep. and it's built for the bush. And that's what Snatch clothing is all about is testing the conditions you as four-wheel drivers come out so we say that's natural clothing get it out get it dirty wear it with pride and that's exactly <laughs> what we do mate one thing we have relied on pretty heavily on this trip is our vms unit because yeah. even though we're on the track we know the track is there knowing where you are on the track is how so long damn to go important. how yep. long to go where your repairs are going to be where you're going to camp that night etc etc and what i've actually done on this trip too i've marked every single bog hole yeah I don't know why, because I never want to see him again. But... So, so you can do at least a 700 waypoints, can you, on the one track? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just like a sea of blue waypoints all the way along. Every single bog hole. But the VMS unit, honestly, guys, mm. if you haven't got yourself a GPS system in your vehicle, the new VMS systems, way to rock and roll. Mm. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, stick around, because coming up next, of course, is the outtakes. And something tells me the Tassie Cole got to us a yeah, little bit. did a little one. bit. I'm finding mud in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> what, are these? what are they doing? I don't know. There's a camera crew. Uh -huh. 
weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's very odd. Every time you go pull drive, it seems to be a speed camera crew. Just... Hello, everyone has that? I'm sure. 345, 6, 37. Ruben, stab him with a screwdriver, mate. <laughs> uh, apparently, if you put an onion in your mouth when you eyes ball. Right. I didn't do anything. Oh, so close. Uh, Another goal of mine on this trip is to eat my body weight in beef jerky. So far, I'm on track. Big Russian icebreaker. Uh-oh, boys. Go back the other way, Ruben. <laughs> oh, no. If I hit third, I can gap that and land the down ramp about where you are. You'll probably break your elbow, yo. Yeah. Has been. If only we had someone with, I don't know, a beaver on their head and a set of waders <laughs> that could go in there. <laughs> look at the mud for it. Oh, what? <laughs> We've got... In you get. Alan. How are you filming with that? Have a look at the front of it. Yeah, no, it's still... Well, there you go, and the sun's nice, but... I haven't tasted this one in a while. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, can I just have first go? Yeah. Just dig that out of there, and it's just a little... Yeah. Try that, bro. Happy little Vegemite for breakfast, lunch and tea. Because we're happy little Vegemites. We all adore our Vegemites. It puts a rose in every cheek. <laughs> Oh yeah. How good is that? A little spice. Like, that, it's, that's and a little mushroomy overtone too. It's like <laughs> that real earthy. organic. Make me laugh. That's not weird. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Stop! Oh, oh. Grab it. <laughs> Big shoes to follow. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm a bit edgy today, boys. And I always find it helps just to have fresh breath before you go into a bog hole. Just have a mint before you go in. Who knows who you might meet in the bog hole. 